Good morning, everybody. Uh, so in the start, I will talk a little bit about MPI3, one-sided communication. Uh, the topic is still from our side a little bit premature, I would say, but I hope I can at least give some hints of uh, what has improved and uh, which environment variables and so on can be uh, beneficial for your uh, if you try to, to use MPI3 one-sided communications. So, this that, that uh, uh, in, in the uh, past, when you asked uh, any developers, developers if they are willing to use one-sided communication, uh, they refused it because they said the implementations were not ready for it and the performance was uh, really bad, so uh, they couldn't use uh, the implementation yet. Uh, but I would like to encourage you, after seeing latest results from, uh, from Cray with this um, the, um, distributed memory, app interface and uh, probably some beginning with Intel OmniPath. I'm not sure it's uh, really marked experimental, but, uh, but at least I was able to run some benchmarks and get some numbers. So that's why I would like to uh, encourage you to give it another try and uh, use MPI3 one-sided communications. Uh, why I will try to motivate and first what is uh, MPI one-sided communications were already available in uh, MPI2. But um, I would say that the newest updates in MPI3 made it really applicable. Uh, benchmarks for testing the implementation. So Intel, MP, uh, Intel MPI benchmarks has one extra executable that has several, several uh, flavors of one-sided communications like uh, unidirectional put and unidirectional get or unidirectional uh, or put and get with aggregate and aggregate and non-aggregate means uh, you, you have iterations and after each iterations after each iteration there is a fence call synchronization in the non-aggregate version and uh, the aggregate version is that you do all your puts or all your gets iterations at once and at the very uh, end you put the uh, MPI fence call to do the synchronization. Of course this is much uh, delivers much better performance but probably you can see from the difference what the impact is of frequent uh, synchronization. Um, so for this topic to uh, our final goal or to use one-sided, I would say, is to overlap communication and uh, computation. So uh, it's really crucial that the progress engine of MPI is uh, continuing when uh, even if calls are not inside, uh, <coughs> even if ranks are not inside MPI calls. Uh, there is a uh, famous um, environment variable to uh, get the asynchronous progress in MPitch and uh, there are some caveats so it's not working uh, as intended but uh, we tried to improve that by uh, better uh, yeah, maybe I should say this later so we try to improve this by uh, by other environment by another environment variable, and I will uh, 
say something more about this later. Um, there's a project here from ETH Zurich, uh, the one-sided communication in CP2K. I just want to say, uh, show two slides of the presentation I got from Alfio, he, who is present here. And uh, we have an, we have, used to have an MPI working uh, group in the IXPAC community. This is um, Intel started common uh, community to uh, present newest features in, or latest features in MPI. And we had a few presentations. Now it's, uh, I, I, I would say it's a little bit hibernating because the uh, chair or the, uh, uh, the guy who's organizing it is now in charge for the total IXPAC. And so we hope that we find some time to revive this working group again. And one of the really interesting talks was given by Alfio about the one-sided communication in CP2K. And last but not least, I would uh, show some Cray-specific options. Uh, I'm feeling probably a little bit uncomfortable because I haven't tried them my own. So I just report what I found in a Cray presentation and what might be beneficial to use on uh, a Cray when you uh, deal with one-sided communication. So one-sided communications, typical MPI GET usage. Uh, this is a little bit sketchy, sorry, but, uh, oh. Uh, this is strange. No, it's just, um, no, it's just, um, can you please, please help for a moment? Uh, it's, n no, it's coming. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Did I show this one? No. no. Uh, this would be uh, the MPI two one-sided communication scheme, a uh, typical one that we have in, in the benchmark. Sorry, it's a little bit very sketchy, but uh, what I want to show is that you uh, first create the memory window here, uh, put in uh, inside a buffer uh, with the data and create the window and then have to use a fence for the uh, first uh, synchronization before you work with MPI, one-sided communication, then, sorry, uh, then go into the MPI get and get another buffer with size one from, another e from this memory window that was created on, uh, on the other side. And uh, then you can probably more uh, uh, overlap, overlapping MPI get calls. And finally, uh, you use a fence when you uh, go into uh, compute regime again. So uh, what was seen in the past were that we have high synchronization cost because this is a fence call here and that way is uh, uh, global communication and so when this whole is not scaling so uh, of this of this synchroniza synchronization cost and uh, one improvement here for MPI 3 I think is the uh, requ are the request based calls so that you don't uh, that you can um, add to an MPI get it's now called MPI RGET because it's uh, request based and then you uh, define a request or a vector of an array of requests and uh, <coughs> you now can, can handle the MPI RGET or MPI RPUT uh, in a similar fashion as you did with MPI I send and MPI I receive. But in principle, you need only half of the calls then that you, for an, uh, for an I receive, 
uh, I send, I receive pattern, you either use an uh, I get, uh, sorry, R uh, get, and uh, replace the I receive, and you don't have an send in that case, or vice versa, you replace the MPI I send by an MPI R put uh, with the request handling and no uh, call on the other side. And then you can very fine-grained uh, finish the request by using an MPI wait as, I, as you did for the, uh, for the I send I receive. So, um, in that case, um, after that we would have a compute call uh, to, to your uh, data, to your com computing, and finish everything by an MPI win unlock. And uh, this example doesn't show the whole uh, power of this approach because normally you would have something like uh, several buffers and try to overlap the communication of several buffers uh, with each other and computation to, uh, to gain the best overlap of computation and communication. Uh, so some benchmarks for testing uh, the implementation. Uh, Intel, as I said, has the Intel MPI benchmarks and uh, uh, a little side information, I, I shared my office with the uh, designer of the IMB benchmarks for about 10 years and, and uh, saw the development and even right after MPI2 was designed, uh, he was adding uh, benchmarks for benchmarking uh, the one-sided communication and um, there's even an MPI I.O., but this is not interesting now. And uh, there's now an executive, extra executable that is called IMB-RMIA for the uh, based, based benchmarks. Probably uh, one that I haven't shown is most interesting, which tries to measure the overlap uh, of computer of comp computation and communication. There's some artificial computation in it and they try to measure how much of the computation is overlapped by the communication. Uh, yeah, I was trying to play with it, but the results so far were not so promising. I was looking into uh, iTech. Uh, iTech is similar to Vampire to see the MPI communication. So it's iTech even uh, supports uh, showing the one-sided calls. And then you can see uh, how much of the communication is really over, uh, computation is really overlapped by the communication. And uh, some people like more the Ohio State benchmarks and they offer an uh, similar functionality of for MPI put and MPI get. Um, yeah, the IMB RMA benchmarks and um, yeah, you find them to parallel studio, studio. I would guess they are here on uh, when you look under, under uh, opt intel uh, and MPI, MPI and you find IMB together with the source code and probably uh, when today I find some time, I, I can try to, to compile this with the, uh, on your Cray system and try what to see how the behavior on your system, on your system. system. And um, yeah, I was using the uh, latest available uh, MPI distribution. Uh, you can get a benchmark list here by IMB minus RMA minus H and if you are using uh, ordinary or the um, normal Intel machines then you can can find in the bin directory of Intel MPI the 
pre-compiled executable, so you don't have to compile it yourself. Uh, I wonder, I, I guess here on this machine, it probably only works in compatibility mode, um, but we can test. And you find a list of all the available benchmarks. You will see some, something like 10 different benchmarks, different flavors. Uh, in addition to the uh, one directional puts and gets, you find uh, bi directional. And you can uh, map this to the original IMB calls like ping pong and ping ping. Ping pong is that a message is sent back and forth between two nodes or two ranks. And ping ping means uh, try to measure the bi-directionality of the network by sending from both sides. So both sides send, uh, do a send call and the messages uh, should collide on the network and it's, uh, it's measuring if you have, uh, can achieve the double uh, throughput or if it's uh, just uh, just the normal uh, they share the bandwidth with each other. Um, an important flag that I always would like to to motivate is the so-called off-cache flag. So the off-cache flag tries to minimize cache effects. Uh, when you use IMB then uh, Rough the same message is more or less sent a thousand times back and forth, and a clever compiler will uh, use cache use the cache to improve that, and you see quite severe cache effects in uh, in this IMB ping pong ping ping, and especially for mid sized messages. So for for low for latency, you don't see the cache effects, and for real in the bandwidth regime. Uh, you don't see cache effects as well, but if you uh, go in the mid-range, uh, say 100 kilo, kilobyte messages or 16 kilobyte, 16 to 128 kilobyte messages, then uh, you can see uh, probably very severe cache effects that spoil your measurements. So it, the uh, measurements of IMB then don't have to do so much with uh, the, the real measurements and codes. And uh, this flag tries to, uh, to cure this, and you simply can set it uh, to minus one and then takes a predefined value, or if you see that this is not working, then uh, you can uh, try to put the size here of your, uh, your cache from your machine as a parameter. And I would try to, to motivate you, if you use the benchmark, uh, then to think on the off-cache or try to use both flavors and see the difference because it couldn't, can be really severe. So sometimes you see in the mid-range really spikes where you, you have uh, artificial high bandwidth which uh, goes away when you uh, switch on the off-cache option. Uh, benchmarks are offered as non-aggregate, which means that there is a wind fence after each, uh, after each MPI put or get to finish it. Or in contrast to that, we have aggregate measurements where the, the wind fence is just at the very end. So you continuously uh, write into to a buffer, so not the same position, but uh, in a moving position. Uh, that is non-overlapping and then you get, uh, yeah, in the end you, you will place a win fence to end all the iterations and to finish all the communication. And of course this is much faster and has much better bandwidth. Uh, and you can see what might be the difference from uh, using this in an aggregate way or uh, putting a fence after each call. Um, for good performance on Omnipath networks, I've, I've found using the default uh, OFI fabrics. So OFI, if you have Omnipath installed, sorry because you, um, I think you don't have it in-house, even for your small test machine. But if you go somewhere else and work with Omnipath, then 
uh, you find that the new default will be the OFI fabrics if it's installed. And uh, then I was finding in the memory uh, manual that there is a new, uh, new, um, new environment variable for switching on the AMA uh, communication or for improving it. And uh, the plots I want to show from the benchmarks uh, were only possible by switching that on, this one. Before, it got stuck in some uh, mid-range, so it was necessary to put this on. But there is some in the small print of this, uh, it's written that it's still experimental and uh, that <coughs> it shouldn't work with the uh, you should use the, the verbs interface or drivers and not the uh, PSM2 drivers. I don't know, I haven't asked yet for the reason of that. It might be that threat safety plays a role, but um, I, I just did PSM2 and M2 and for the benchmark, the benchmarks it was uh, working so uh, just as a preview, I, I used this and <clears throat> it would be interesting to see how it behaves uh, using that in a real application and if, if there are issues with it, uh, probably by, uh, with threat safety or, or other possible uh, issues. So that were my results and here on the y-axis it's um, megabyte per second and here is the, um, is the number of bytes that is for, MP, for MPI get, MPI get and MPI put and you see uh, by using the, um, the new environment variable you do about eight, gig, about eight gigabytes here which is uh, in the range here for, for these machines, KNL machines uh, by, MPI, by MPI ping pong with uh, two-sided communication as well. So um, that's quite promising because without the flag, it would end probably at the half of, of the bandwidth. So that was quite beneficial and so we uh, see here the results for the unidirect uh, unidirectional get and put and you see that here the get is still uh, better but it's just first results I haven't uh, done too many repetitions and but probably the implementation of get is, is a little bit easier than the put implementation. Asynchronous communication so sometimes you see that uh, that communication and computation is not overlapping and the reason the very reason is that uh, uh, that the MPI is just proceeding when it's on a rank when it's really in, inside an MPI call and uh, otherwise it uh, it will just wait and to uh, to get the MPI progress engine, to keep the MPI progress engine running all the time, uh, you have to uh, spawn here an extra thread. And this is done formally with mpitch async progress equals one. And when you um, look at it with VTune, you see that you have an extra thread then uh, that's only doing MPI, uh, MPI test. I think, and all the time. And uh, Intel has renamed it into IMPI async progress, but I think it's really the same. And, but uh, as I said here, you have uh, frequent tests here on uh, usage of MPI test to keep the progress engine running. And uh, on KNL, when I tested it, uh, the performance really dropped dramatically. 
So um, that was a little bit disappointing that it doesn't work here, here, in the here in the past. It worked on some machines that you get better overlap. But uh, here that was really, rare. I was, was, looking at, was looking at it with VTune and I saw uh, the helper thread here that was spawned uh, by using the MPI async progress. And the helper thread was interfering with the ordinary OpenMP threads that I had for the computation. Uh, I will show this later. Um, there is an experimental feature to pin the helper threads. So it's all right inside the, the distribution, but it's not, uh, um, not documented. But I was, was trying it still, still inside, still inside. And you can uh, use IMPI progress pin equals and then some numbers NM and NM is the number of the calls where the progress thread is, is pinned. So you can pin this progress thread to avoid interference with the ordinary M OpenMP threads. So you have to uh, define in which, on which calls the uh, OpenMP threads are running and spare one or two th two cores and then uh, pin the helper thread on the, uh, on the empty cores. And you don't see any, uh, get, don't get any feedback when you switch on MPI, IMPI debug equals five or what's the normal choice. But when you go up to 19 for the experimental uh, features, you get the verbose of output and see that it has uh, at least reports to pin uh, the helper thread on the spec specified cause. So with that you can cure the situation a little bit, but it's still uh, suboptimal, I would say. And the developer uh, was um, admitting that uh, there can be problems still with threat safety, that they were using global locks and there's still a lot of uh, um, room for improvement for the performance of the, uh, the helper threat usage. So how does it look like? Um, sorry, this is a little bit blurry here. And this is the, uh, as I said here, unpinned uh, helper threat. And you have uh, have here the uh, OpenMP threads and, and you see, see uh, this uh, special thread is the uh, master thread and under the master thread you see another thread, the helper thread, thread and yellow here in, uh, in VTune is MPI usage. So the helper thread is frequently using MPI and when you uh, group the VTune uh, one important feature here is that you can, can group the display, which means uh, show the display here of, uh, of the grid in different flavors. And I was using the grouping where I start with core and thread. So I was looking at the cores and saw that one core has had more to do than the others and then I unfolded it and saw the threads on this core and I saw that the helper thread was sharing this core with uh, another OpenMP thread and so this OpenMP thread was running much slower than the other ones and uh, dragging down the whole application speed. So my idea was to, to keep one or two cores free like in the core spec on the, uh, uh, um, of your Cray machine and put the helper thread on, on the free thread, uh, free core, so, sorry. So that helped a little bit, but it's still uh, not that satisfying, satisfying. So, a few words about um, interest, an interesting project by your Lazaro. And uh, he was using one-sided implementation in CP2K. 
uh, and uh, he was using the RMR passive ta target with um, MPI RGET, so he was using the uh, request-based operations. And uh, probably that was uh, also easier to port because you can directly map than the request base uh, I send, I receive uh, algorithm that uh, they had before. Uh, one, feed, one output was that they have much less synchronization because it's only half of the synchronization points, I would say. Uh, and he says that the overall new implementation is far more flexible. So the performance results were made on a Cray with the uh, DMAP interface. And uh, we have here the fr uh, three columns. And the first is the point-to-point -point implementation. Uh, step of the, of the one-sided one communication and uh, last not least the, uh, uh, the one-sided implementation uh, with four layers. We have uh, probably, Alfio will have another presentation someday to uh, explain this. But what we see here is that the, the weight on the communication is reduced a lot when we go to one-sided communication. So there is, um, the synchronization did not, how I say, decrease too much or even uh, grew up here, but overall uh, the results are quite promising that we achieve here better performance than in the ordinary one. Uh, two-sided communication, point-to-point -point communication. So, next point would be grace-specific tuning options. And uh, first of all, you can uh, go into the manual if you are on a Cray machine and uh, just do man intro MPI or man MPI and you can uh, get information for each MPI function here. Um, tuning through environment variables is possible. Distributed uh, memory application, DMAP is, AP is, is crucial for performance of one-sided communication on a Cray and you uh, enable us by this uh, environment variable and in addition you have to link to a uh, lib dmap library. Um, yeah, one specific tuning option that I mentioned yesterday already is that you uh, have this core spec option that you leave one to two uh, cores empty for the operation system and especially for uh, global operations, the interference of the removal of the interference of uh, the OS can bring uh, a tremendous uh, dramatic impact and they report that when they have collectives with one processor per node uh, which run about 5.5x slower without the core spec option. So uh, um, in the uh, presentation I saw there was a curve where uh, where the, um, with the tickless kernel option, uh, the, the curve was rather flat, while the curve without the tickless, with the uh, normal execution, uh, was going linearly up the cost. So uh, this should be uh, really tried to, to use this cost break. It's either, I think, an option in Slurm or uh, in the Cray environment. And you have about, about factor of 5.5 seen. And for uh, more ranks per node, uh, for up to 4.7. So uh, this is 
are really a thing that should be taken into account. So usage of MCD RAM. So default allocation uh, in MCD RAM you can get of course by what you already experienced yesterday, NUA CTL minus M bind equals one. Um, Cray has in that presentation offered to, uh, to have a more selective MCD RAM applications through these uh, calls here in MPI alloc mem and MPI win allocate uh, by using info keys. But I was, was browsing the MEN pages and I didn't see in, uh, yet an, uh, an hint to it. Maybe it's uh, in an upcoming uh, an upcoming uh, version of Cray MPI. Um, yeah, and uh, that would be if you want to selectively uh, use the MCD RAM by using uh, these alloc mem operations. And yesterday you tried already to, uh, to use the high bandwidth memory interface. Uh, for allocating and deallocating in MCD RAM. And that would be even more convenient because then you would have just a parameter to MPI alloc mem and MPI win alloc uh, that you can change and uh, to, uh, to change from DRAM to MCD RAM. Uh, so I don't know what's the status here if they already implemented it or if it's uh, still pending. And one way to find uh, uh, to find uh, the memory that's uh, that can be used for MCD RAM, or it's uh, is a good idea to put into the MCD RAM, would be uh, to use Vampire. To, oh, sorry, to use um, Vtune, and that would be the command line to use VTune for the memory access uh, experiment. And when you do that, you see something uh, like that for the memory access. And uh, first is that it's shown uh, here uh, the memory access for the DRAM, for the MCD RAM, and uh, you can even split this in, into read and write. But even more interesting, you can, uh, can see, uh, order what's the most impacting arrays here. And then you can, can get the allocation, uh, the location of the allocation of these arrays uh, by grouping uh, in that way. And this will, it, unfortunately, it does not tell you the name of the array, but it does uh, show you uh, where it is allocated. And from that, you will, of course, get uh, the right arrays. And you can then go into that routine and selectively allocate only these arrays to MCD RAM. So that would be a help here. And. Yeah, now I'm already finished with my part. Do you have uh, further questions to... Yes? previous slide you had this command line and uh, was it dash dash or single dash? Sometimes the point turns double dash into, you know, Yeah, I see the point, but uh, it should be dash dash, but ah, I, I would yeah, say it, uh, it will even work with a single dash. Okay, cool, thanks. But dash dash would be more correct. Yeah, probably I... I tried to find some time to uh, to do some benchmarks on the Cray system and see how it relates to 
to the values I measured on, on our lab machines. Yeah. So the, the first uh, graph that you had with this put and uh, get, was this done, or is this done on, on these machines here? No. Oh, okay. Not yet. But is it a gray KNL or? Pardon me? Is it, a, these are KNL system. Yeah. Okay, but is this gray KNL or is it, a, or is it with um, uh, Omnipath? No, that was with Omnipath. Okay. Because that, uh, that was after the result of, of setting okay. this environment variable on an Omnipath network. Yeah, perhaps we could just try the IMB RMA on, on this system. Yeah. And then we would get an equivalent, right? Okay. Good. Thanks. So I have a question. Um, <coughs> is, is it recommended then to uh, develop code using MPI one sided against MPI two sided? Or? Oh, that's a uh, good question. Probably. <laughs> probably you should maintain two code paths. Uh, so if you have a, have a limited uh, communication routine, then I would recommend in the beginning to have uh, your usual code path and probably one switch option where you can, can go to the one-sided operations. But would be dangerous, I would think, to, uh, to really design or So who would be interesting to see more results on, on the Cray machine? So I would try to, uh, to generate them today or, or later. Maybe we can communicate them here through uh, your institution. Okay. Um, yeah, I would suggest if I just proceed with the next presentation. So, sorry for, for having not more material on that, but from our side, it's uh, quite in the beginning. 